Uh, I want to talk more about the ever-present origin. Um, I kind of had to rush there to get that last quote in in the last video. Um, and uh, that last part about integral consciousness being just plainly aware of the truth. That obviously needs some unpacking. And um, I wanted to get into that today. Um, and to do that, I'm going to try to, I mean, let's, let's go through these, these five stages of consciousness again. Um, the archaic, magic, mythic, mental, and integral. Um, so the archaic stage is, uh, is, is origin, basically. Um, everything is still in its natural state of immediately present, undifferentiated consciousness. So human beings are still animals without the capability of any kind of uh, analogical, metaphorical understanding at all. Um, they cannot put the words into language, or put the world into language in any, in any significant way. Um, so the, the archaic is, is you know, there's not much to, to say about the archaic. Um, it's this origin. Uh, and then the magic is um, man begins to, human beings begin to build analogies and relationships between objects in their experience in the world. Um, one way of thinking about one of these relationships would be uh, the phases of the moon and the women's menstrual cycles were, were connected. And at this primitive stage of magic consciousness, they assumed that the moon was causing women to get pregnant. So, in other words, I mean, these people were starting to make judgments about uh, uh, facts in the world and relationships between between things, between events. And so they, they made, uh, you know, their consciousness was structured around, around um, this associative sympathetic interweaving of, of these events. Um, so they're starting to recognize the world. And for them, they have a very point-like consciousness, Gebser says. That in other words, uh, when, they folk, when they pay attention to something, they must get lost in it. And their concepts are very uh, spiritually tinged, animism, uh, you know, think of they, they sense when they when they have an idea and, and associate it with this object or event in the world. It's a very powerful feeling of association because that that thing is alive, and your your inner experience of it is just a uh, you know a clear example of its power over you because you you can't help but recognize these connections. Um, and he Gebser assigns. Um, certain uh, body location for, for where these people would have localized the soul or, or the principle of life or it's whatever you want to call it. Um, and for the magic, humans, uh, it was located in the semen and in the blood. These were their the holy substances. And, and again, we have to remember that all these stages are still present with us now. Um, and so we can see, like, even up until... Uh, death of the crucifixion of Christ, um, blood was a big part of the, of the symbology involved with that symbol, uh, with that myth. And um, so you could, that's an example of how they're still present even in uh, more uh, contemporary times. But um, the mythical stage is a very verbal Stage, people are really learning to speak and uh, enact worlds with their words, and um, they uh, have, a, have a sense of memory now, really, and a sense of being able to recollect and internalize the world a little bit. Um, they're very cont contemplative. Uh, they they wonder at the world. The world is 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 a, is a wondrous, mysterious place. And, you know, this is the stage we're starting to get the first philosophers, really. 
at the mythic level. Um, and uh, they have a, a cyclical notion of like rhythmical time. And in the same way, they, they're, they're, they're creation myths and uh, mythological images are circular. They, they, the story is the same always and there's no new story that's ever going to be written. Um, so they're temporally bound in that sense. They, they're going in a circle. Um, and um, the mental stage uh, is of course, this is where uh, the traditional religion develops, uh, where the idea of, of religion being a separate sphere of, of reality. Uh, you know, because in the past, man was united with his uh, his, his spirituality. It, was, it wasn't half my life I'll spend being religious and the other half I'll spend being secular. It was totally, he was immersed in his, in a spiritual world. But mental man differentiated um, truth, in other words, science, from religion. And science was what directed your everyday secular life. And, you know, people still have their religions on the side. But they're based on beliefs. Whereas for mythical magic man, you know, there's no beliefs. What do you mean no belief? The ancient Greeks' experience of, of the gods in nature was direct for them. They directly experienced these gods because the way they understood the world was in terms of uh, these uh, personified natural forces. It's just like we understand, we understand the world in the mental realm, in the mental stage right now in terms of naturalized forces. But what does that, I mean, what does that mean? When the mental stage ra uh, naturalizes something, it means it converts the world into its way of understanding. And it projects its um, own conception of itself onto the structure of the world. And, and based on that structure, it, it picks out these various forces. And it's it lines up, it works to that level. It's a, it's a valid way of approaching the world, but it's still, it's not like we're just finding this information in the world. Um, and, uh, oh, I forgot to mention in the mythic realm, the, uh, the center of the soul was considered the, the mouth, the diaphragm, your ability to speak, and uh, the heart. So, you know, your, uh, your will was, was your heart, and it's more emotive in that sense than the mental realm where the seat of the soul is the spinal cord and the brain. And we see that in Descartes, and it really hasn't changed up until um, the cognitive paradigm that we're moving through right now. Um, so the mental realm is all about thinking and rationality. I think, therefore I am. I am nothing but my knowledge of the sensory world. And that knowledge is symbolic. It's formal. It's um, reducible to shapes. And um, Gebser talks about the mental realm having almost an obsession with space. It tries to spatialize everything. Um, and, it, and it uses spatial metaphors to um, understand to understand time so we the mental realm projects space onto time and, and that, that that just means our the mental stages uh, conception of time is uh, linear and we progress on into bigger and better and greater futures but it's just ever uh, it's infinite and it uh, we're never going to reach the end we just have to keep progressing and get better and better and better and that's a spatial metaphor for time, because time in that, in that way is out there, whereas, you know, say in the integral realm, time is, is it's right here, 